हेलो हाय हाय आई एम गुड कैन यू प्लीज टर्न ऑन योर कैमरा ओके सियोर ओके सेल वी स्टार्ट नाउ या प्लीज टेल मी अबाउट योर सेल या माय नेम इज प्रिंस कुमार and i have a 5 year experience as a java developer currently i am working in birla sir and uh, i have a skill set like uh, java spring spring boot microservices and in the front end side i have exposure of uh, react and uh, then after in the back end side i use uh, some database like mysql mongo db oracle like that and uh, then after uh, in the aws clouds i got satisfied with the aws cloud practitioner so almost i have uh, all those uh, services uh, how we can use it and uh, what are the way to use it so those kind of the information i have all those aws services and uh, yeah that's all okay do you know java yeah i am java stream what in okay can i okay. yes How do S stream work internally in Java eight? S stream basically uh, in Java eight they have provided the same features. So if I talk about Java eight features, so you can say like uh, S stream is one of the popular uh, features they have provided. So through the streams like uh, we can do the operations on uh, array, string, or list of the data, which is collection which will support basically. and we can do the operations on that and then we can get the results so it's basically uh, like reducing the our code and uh, it's improving the performance you can say and it's supporting for the lazy loading so also they have some improvement inside this method so that uh, we can uh, get the better time complexity also so because of that we are using the streams and they have a multiple method they have provided like a stream having map methods filter methods we can do the filters on the data we can map it we can create in the object and then after we can process with the grouping by collectors lot of the classes they have provided so with that classes help of that classes we can do our task uh, very easily and we can process our data that is the benefit we have okay what is the difference between map and flat map yeah so if i talk about uh, map and flat map so basically in the map uh, we are processing uh, list of the data but uh, in the flat map if you have a list of list data like nested list so in that case uh, we are going with the flat map and we are doing the proce processing on the data with the flat map otherwise we can take the help of the flat, uh, map and we can process the data if we have a just list amount of the data so that is the basic differences we have and internally if i talk about uh, flat map so they are uh, working nested the uh, amount of the data which is uh, released we have nested array list so in that it will work okay how does the garbage collector work garbage collection oh. okay so basically uh, in java they have provided uh, gc which is garbage collectors which is uh, improving the performance of our application so if i talk about garbage collectors so they have provided uh, multiple types of the garbage collectors in java so like uh, parallel processing or serial garbage collectors so those are the two garbage collectors they have introduced now it is uh, we have a multiple type of the garbage collectors but basically we have a two types of the garbage collectors parallels and uh, sequential so the the main task of the garbage collector is like uh, it will do like uh, what are the unreferenced data we have or uh, unreferenced object in our classes in java classes so it will clear those object and it will uh, allow to again use those memory to our uh, system so that is the benefit we can get with the Uh, garbage collectors so the data which is unreferenced or unused or maybe those are not required in the future so those becomes a unreferenced data and then uh, 
is unnecessary it's occupy the data in our memory into the our system so for that uh, it help us to clear those data and allocate again those uh, memory to some other uh, processing yeah that's all Okay, what is the spring auto configurations? Spring auto configurations. So, a spring auto configurations basically it's one of the features we can say into the Spring Boot. So, in a Spring Boot, they have provided uh, multiple features. So, one of the features is uh, auto configurations. So, in our uh, Spring Boot, in a Spring, basically in the Spring, uh, we are configuring each and everything our own. into the xml files or maybe with the java code annotations but uh, in the spring boot they have added one features which is auto configurations and with the help of enable auto configuration annotations they are providing to scan entire package or what are the like uh, jars we have provided into the phone phone.xml so based on that uh, corresponding what are the details we have provided inside the application.yml or application.properties file so it will collect all those data and it will configure automatically for us uh, data source or maybe any other connections which is required if you want to connect with s3 bucket so you just have to provide the details and you have to write the code for that it's automatically take those details and it will configure it. so like that in the same way we have like if you want to connect with the jpa so you can just add the jars or you can provide the credentials for the mysql drivers and it will go and we connect with the database so those kind of the activity it will do automatically for example in the spring we are adding manually uh, tomcat server but in uh, spring boot uh, we don't want to add uh, any server manually you just want to add the dependency or maybe if you want you to, if you don't want to add dependency what are the default uh, servers they have they will pick those uh, servers and they will compile or run your code and it will become a production uh, ready code we can say so those kind of the flexibility they have provided with the help of the auto configurations okay how does spring cloud configuration work A spring cloud configurations like uh, for example uh, we have some gateway or maybe we have some um, eureka client so for that configurations cloud gateway so in the microservice architectures we are generally using the spring cloud gateway so in that like we are taking the help of same uh, like netflix or jules and uh, what are the spring boot server we have so we are registering those server with the eureka servers or eureka servers uh, like is it capable to respond to the our uh, particular front controllers we can say and uh, like uh, we are making with the api gateway single entry point and uh, whenever request will come from the client it will come to the api gateway and from the gateway uh, it will decide like based on the load balancers it what are the registered services we have so those particular uh, services it will load based on the like what are the configurations we have given for the load balancer maybe round robin we have given right so based on that uh, configurations it will uh, take those particular instances or it will respond those particular instances so those kind of the activity we can do with the spring cloud okay how do how do microservices communicate rest and messaging sorry how do microservices communicate rest and my messaging okay so for communicating the microservices to each other so for example in the microservice architectures we have a multiple services so how the one service will communicate with other services so for that we have a multiple way to communicate uh, one service to other service sometimes we are using the rest template uh, rest client or sometimes we are using fusion client and sometimes we are using soap also and grpc so those are the couple of way to communicate uh, one services to other services nowadays people are using uh, kafka also to communicate one service to other services 
So Kafka is one of the way to provide the streaming data platforms and uh, process the data, uh, bunch amount of the data very fast. So those kind of the tools we can use or uh, inbuilt web client risk template generally we are using to communicate to one service to other services. Okay. How do you register services in Indica? How do you register services? Services in Indica. Okay. For registering a services into the Indica, like uh, we have some annotations. Like, uh, for example, we have a one client and one is server. So, Eureka is one of the servers and what other services we have, those we can consider as a client. So, what are the Eureka servers, uh, port numbers we have and uh, for the identify, we have to provide the, like, we have to enable inside the, our services, enable Eureka servers and we have to provide the port numbers like uh, connection port numbers of Eureka servers, those we can provide it. So automatically, if you uh, start your services, it will go and it will register with your Eureka servers if you um, enable it. So we have a enable uh, Eureka servers or uh, enable uh, Eureka clients. So those are the annotations we have. So those we can use also for uh, communicating. So we can provide the path or port number inside this our uh, application.properties files or application.yml files. And through that, we can uh, provide uh, register those uh, services to the Eureka server. Okay. I have done from my side. Do you have any questions? Uh, questions I don't have. Thank you. Yes, thank you.